Hello and welcome to part six of Dev Maths and Stats Refresher Course Lecture 4. Now, linear algebra has many applications in optimization, as we will see, and in statistics, as you'll see through the year. Um, but for now, we'll just look at one application to simultaneous equations. You already know how to solve simultaneous equations by elimination and substitution. Now we add another method. It's particularly useful when you start getting many variables and it's very time consuming to solve by hand. It's because the, the linear algebra way is where you can automate it to solving equations automatically with the computer. So first we're going to set up an equation using a vector x, y, z and the matrix C which we already have. And if I know that matrix C times this vector x, y, z is equal for example to, to this vector B then you have an equation like this. Now I'm, I'm going to write this out by hand, so you should be able to multiply this out by hand, but we need to improve the way this is written, so I've done it, hopefully transferred it to the whiteboard, yes. Um, so it's very hard to make maple write it to 3, 5, 2, 7, 0, 6, 1, 10, 2. wants to make maple write it like this, but it doesn't want to because it knows that this is V, so it always signifies it to V. But this is what you need to multiply out so using the usual rules for matrix multiplication. So if at, any stage, if at any stage you want to just pause the video just to see if you can multiply this out, multiply this by this, and then what would, what would this become? So pause the video. And then I'll write out the answer, which I'll do now. So, multiplying it, you get 3 times x plus 5 times y plus 2 times z. So you're going to get 3x plus 5y plus 2z. Top row. Next row will be 7x plus 0y plus 6z. And the bottom row will be x plus 10y plus 2z. And that should be equal to 26, 96, and 4. Because here you've got a vector. Here you also have a vector, and if they're equal, it means that this number must be this, this number must be this, and this number must be this. So what we have here is a set of three simultaneous equations captured in this matrix form, which is why we can then use matrices to find the solution. We want to find what's this matrix x, y, z, this matrix, that, sorry, this vector x, y, z, or the vector v is the solution we want to try and find. So what we can do is, instead of solving it in the usual kind of ways, we can solve it using matrix and vector algebra. So what you do is you find the inverse of C, which is C minus 1. You multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of C, but notice on the left here we're following the golden rule, so the original equation C V equals B, you multiply both sides by C minus 1, so we have C minus 1 C V equals C minus 1 B, then remember some of the things we found earlier, which is that on the left-hand side, it does not matter which one we calculate first. So instead of calculating CV first, we can calculate C minus 1C first. But the definition of C minus 1C is I3, must be the identity matrix. On the right, we have C minus 1B. But because of what we know about the identity matrix, identity matrix times V is just V. So by multiplying by C minus 1, that completely clears the left-hand side of the equation, and you're left with V, which is the answer, x, y, z. And on the right-hand side, you have the thing you need to calculate to find what that is. So if you calculate the right-hand side, you get straight away your answers for x, y, and z. So if you can do that, so x, y, and z, on the left-hand side, there's the identity matrix, there's V. This just gives you 6 minus 2, 9. So the x is 6. Y is minus 2, 
and z is 9. If you check that back in equation 1, so if I now change v, so it is 6 minus 2, 9, and then multiply that by c, or c multiply that, I get 26, 96, 4, which is exactly correct what I need to get. So these answers for x, y, and z are correct. So in whiteboard terms, the way that we've solved this, we've said that we're starting with an equation C V is equal to um, V. Multiply both sides by C minus 1. Huh. Following the golden rule. Then this times this is the identity matrix, so it just cancels out. So the next step you can put this. But IV, because it's identity matrix, that's this times this gives you I. But this times this is just V. So from here to here, it's just the step of multiplying by the inverse matrix, and you find the answer. And that gives you X, Y, Z. So it's a really automatic way of calculating solutions to simultaneous equations as you'll see in some of the future problems on, on optimization and others. Um, okay, so it's automatic. A problem is, in fact, it's time consuming as you saw. We did the, we did the inverse for 2 by 2, inverse for 3 by 3 is really fiddly. It's possible but it takes a while. And in actual fact, even for computers, if you get to like 8 by 8, 9 by 9, 10 by 10, it starts getting it's like not efficient computationally. So there are other methods that we use. And one which is, which means we only need determinants instead of having to find inverses, we just find determinants. That's called Cramer's rule. So let's have a quick look at that. Perhaps not. Yeah. And I'll just illustrate this quickly using the same set of simultaneous equations as before. Instead of using inverse, we use Cramer's rule. Let's just set out the, the thing we're trying to solve. This. Okay, so it doesn't present it very well. It should look like we're trying to go back to this. So that's the equation we're trying to solve. Um, so, Cramer's rule gives you each component separately. So, excuse, sorry, Cramer's rule gives you each solution separately, x, y, and z, which on one side is a bad thing because you have to do it three times. On the other side, it's a good thing because sometimes you only want to know one of those variables and you can just isolate exactly that one. So if we look at what C and B are, there's C and B. What we do is we, we, make, a, we make a new matrix called C1. Now, here's the matrix of the coefficients. How many X, how many Y, how many Z? That's the C matrix. This is the right-hand side matrix of constants. So what you do is, to make this matrix, to make the matrix C1, you take this and you replace the first column with the constants from the right hand side. And the rest is the same. And Cramer's rule tells us that you can get the value of x is simply the determinant of this matrix divided by the determinant of the original matrix. So this divided by this. So calculating the two, the two determinants, divide them, and you get 6, which is the same as we got up here for 6 solutions. And then you can straight away get to so uh, C2. To get Y you make another new matrix but this time you replace the middle using the right hand side constants. And then again um, again you find the determinant of C2 divided by the determinant of C and gives you the correct result, the same results before, negative 2. And then to find, to find the Z, to find Z, you just repeat the same thing. Make another matrix replacing the last column with the right-hand side, 96, 26, 96, 4. And the, the determinant of C3 divided by the original determinant will give you Z. So that's much quicker because you don't have to actually calculate the inverses of anything. You only have to calculate determinants. So there'll be some practice that um, on some of the problem sheets and exercises and other examples in class. Okay, so in um, 
the next lecture, we, we go back to using calculus and we apply the linear algebra and the calculus together to see how that can be applied to optimization problems. But for now, thanks for watching.